Hello, everyone, and welcome to IDP Summer Camp, presented by Raider Digest Network YouTube page, powered by IDPGuys.org. I'm your host, Oklahoma Doug, writer, ranker, video manager for IDPGuys.org, and tonight, it's episode five. We live. Well, we're not really live. We're going to record this pre <laughs> because you never know what this country boy will say. But anyway, tonight it's episode five and we got the Oakland Raiders. And guess who I got on, everybody? Mr. Rated IDP Live, Mr. Dynasty Vipers himself, Coach Don Lee. I'm going to give him a formal introduction just like I do everybody else. Uh, he is a father of eight. Yes, I said eight. He is a fantasy sports writer member, co-creator, slash owner of DynastyVipers.com, Raider Nation alum himself, and co-host of the Raider IDP Live podcast, which will be live Friday night at 8.30 Central Time. But anyway, for now, it's IDP Summer Camp, Episode 5, and I got him on. Coach, what's up, brother? How much, Dougie? How you doing there, bud? Oh, man, you know, another day in the neighborhood. Uh, we had to jump on a little later because I had to run out to the barn, see what was up, see what was spooking the horses. Just a little old black snake. We just got a little old garden snake. Got him out of the way. We're good. That sounds like the perfect way to start IDP camp. A little snake in the grass there, riling up the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on my bladder. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, it's episode five, IDP Summer Camp. Uh, at please everyone, head over to Reader Rider. Uh, Nate's still getting on to me about the way I say it, but I tell him it's just only in love, man. I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce things very popularly, but anyway, everybody head over to Reader Digest Network on the YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button, and uh, we're going to keep dropping the content just day after day after day after day. There's going to be something, so everybody hit head over there, and also head over to DynastyVipers.com. Uh, which I have my good friend on here. Uh, Coach, you, you want to tell us a little bit about Dynasty Vipers there, you about Marcy, about how it came up, buddy. I'm going to let you have the floor a little bit. Uh, it, the show's yours, man. Just tell us a little bit about Coach. All right. Well, Coach here, like you said, I got a father of eight. I've been coaching football, hockey, basketball, whatever the kids get into, I've been coaching pretty much my whole life here. So, uh, as far as DynastyVipers.com comes, that's the branch and uh, Brad Marks there. Uh, we were just sitting around one day, and just like most people, we're like thinking, we're watching these things come through, or we're catching the Twitter, we're checking out some rankings, and we're like, you know what? We've been doing this fantasy game for 15 years. I think we've learned a thing or two. Why don't we try and put something out there? And right. then, of course, for a couple of years, you kind of push it off, you push it off, and then finally it was just like, okay, yeah, that's it, we're going to do it. We're just going to put something out there, put our names to it. And, you know, that's kind of how the birth of the Dynasty Vipers came. And I want to, I want to give you credit here, actually, because the spinoff of Dynasty Vipers is the Viper cast, which we just started. And we would never have got that started if it wasn't for Rated IDP Live, which kind of got me talking on things like this. If I didn't get this opportunity with you to speak, that Viper cast probably wouldn't have come up because it's something, another thing we've been working on for about two years. And just kind of push it off, push it off, push it off. Too busy to do this. But now we're putting that out there, too. So we've got about three episodes in there. Hopefully we'll have you up here right away to talk a little IDP on that as we go around the league there as well. So, um, so those things are all going good. The Raiders are 3 and in preseason, so that's really good. And before anyone, before anyone gets on me, we'll take our three wins in the preseason. We'll call that our Super Bowl right now, okay? We, we don't get very many chances that uh, <laughs> – for these victories lately. So we got to take these small ones when we get a chance. I got my towel in case I want to make a big splash later. Oh, sunglasses. Oh. We're, we're ready to go here. We're Got ready. Coffee. We're ready to talk some Oakland Raiders football here. There's a lot of good things coming down the pipeline in Oakland as they make their way to Vegas. So I'm very excited about some of the things that we can talk about for the first time in quite some time. There's some optimism in Oakland. 
And that's why I wanted to have you on just as soon as I can, Coach. You know, uh, you had a little bit of uh, family stuff last weekend, but, you know, we finally got together. I really wanted to talk Raiders. You know, they're hard knocks this year. We got A.B. with the old helmet situation, da 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 I really wanted to get you on, buddy. Uh, this, is not a, this is not a team that's been in the limelight the last few years, but here we are, and we're talking about Raiders and – I, I guarantee you people want to know what's going on with the Raiders and guess who I contacted the very first person when I was like, I need to, I need to get somebody on with the Raiders. Boom. There's my Canadian Mountie himself, the co-host of Raiders at IDP live. And like you said, brother, Hey man, I, I always knew that you had it in you, man. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you did that. Oh, yeah, so um, we're going to go ahead and jump right on uh, the Raiders. They they moved around for Khalil Mack, you know. So uh, they get they had they was stockpiled in some picks here, Coach. And and did they did you think they got what they needed in that return for Khalil Mack? Are you with me again here, buddy? It's all good. We can still edit it. It's not live. We ain't live. So if you can still hear me, we're good. What's up, buddy? We what's up? It, your mic's turned off again. It's muted. It's all good. It's all good. We got to edit. We got to edit. It's all good. It's all good. Need to take five? Need to take ten? I can go tuck I can go tuck the kids in to bed. We can take about ten. If you want to. Okay, there we go. Oh, you're back. Yeah, well, apparently I didn't charge the headphones there last night, so. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We got to edit. We got to edit. We're not live. We're not live. All right, there we go. All good, brother. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, okay. Where was we, buddy? I think Where was thing, it? Last thing I was talking about was the optimism there in Oakland. A lot of good things coming down the pipeline, and that's what we wanted to talk about here. That's why I wanted to get the Oakland Raiders involved. Okay, all right. So, um, pick right up about a lot of good things going on, and then I'm gonna come at you with the. Uh, so, what was your draft grade? So, yeah, go ahead. And so, yeah, there's a lot of optimism there in Oakland for the first time in a long time. And it's because of their draft. They've drafted really well. They brought in Mike Mayock here, who knows a thing or two about a thing or two, especially when it comes to the NFL draft. Um, there's some picks there that made people kind of question where they're going with it. But you know what? If Mike Mayock would have, uh, was on the NFL Network and he hyped these guys on the NFL Network, their draft pick of Clellan Farrell would have made so much sense to everybody out there because he would have been yep. talking about it. It would have been mainstream. But guys like Clell and Farrell, now people are like, oh, no one was talking about him before the draft. They could have got him so much later. It's about Meg Mayock has proven with the way he's working with this roster that he wants to get his guys. So that's where that optimism comes through. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about the draft here shortly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to – my first question for you right out the gate on uh, IDP Summer Camp, Oakland Raiders. Uh, 
what um before I ask you their draft grade, what D do they run? What D are they running this year, Coach? What what defense are they running? What's their base defense? They'll be doing a lot out of the four three this year. There, they've got a couple D ends here that they like. They got a solid uh, defensive tackle group coming up. In fact, they're one of those teams right now. They're going to cut some good star, um, tackles that are going to make a fifty three man roster somewhere else. Like the, for example, they just picked up Corey Leggett there. Yeah. Two days ago, to help yep. that depth there. So guys like Eddie Vanderos there, he's going to be on his way out. He'll find another team somewhere. As Personal well. favorite of mine, old Vanderos, and I know Kissenberry's always last old Vanderos. Yeah, yeah. Personal favorite of a lot of ours, and uh, I actually didn't know they picked up uh, Corey Lugit. Lugit. Um, he he kind of filled that uh, that role there. Uh, it was in San Diego, wasn't it? On that yeah. defense line. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a hey he was a good spot starter there for us in a lot of weeks back in the day, Corey Lugit. So yeah, I, a lot of ads there I didn't know. So let me get into my second question here, Coach. Uh, what was your draft grade on them a week after the draft? A week after they're done, Mayock, and uh, and after everybody's done in that front office, what's your draft grade after one week, Coach? Okay, so. Where I would draft them, my grade for them would probably be a, a solid B. I don't want to get too high or too low. I know Mayock and Gruden went out there and they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. High-end character guys through the draft, proven winners through the draft. That was kind of what they set up to do. They picked up some Alabama uh, Tide players, some Clemson Tigers. So they got that championship pedigree coming in. Guys who know how to win. The problem in Oakland has been for years, they haven't been able to win those big games. They haven't been able to get themselves over the hump. So one of the things you do as a team, you go out there and you pick up players who are proven winners. Guys like Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, Cleland Farrell, um, right. Trayvon Mullen, guys that were in Trayvon those championship Mullen. games the last three years, right? So yep. guys who Good the spotlight's point. not going to be too big for. Playing the national championship year in, year out, like Clemson and Alabama, it's not much different than the NFL for the spotlight, for the big game kind of feel from week in, week out. So they went out there and they accomplished that. So that's where I, I kind of bumped that grade up a little bit. Plus, they got Good one of my point, favorite coach. They got Good one of my point, favorite man. players in the entire draft there, Jonathan Abram, who's just a heat seeking missile, a tone setting Ooh. player, high character, great backstory. And the thing I love about hard knocks. The thing I like about Hard Knocks is it gets into these stories of these players. We'll talk a little bit later. There's a couple fan favorites already that have these amazing stories of what they've overcome. This is what the Oakland Raiders want to get into the locker room. Not some of the other stuff that has come up through certain players recently, but they've got a lot of good pieces there, a lot of good character, and that's what they wanted to set through their draft. So I'll give them a solid B for that. And those players that are good character, they're good players too. Right on, homie. And hey, we'll go right. Hey, I'll go into straight into one of my uh, fan questions here uh, on the o Oakland Raiders. They wanted to know about that safety. They said they've seen depth charts where it's uh, um, Abram starting. Uh, and so they wanted to know about that safety group there, coach. That, so I'll go right into that and one of my listener questions here. Okay, so with the Oakland Raiders, traditionally the Oakland Raiders have played a lot of too high safety. They don't really have – so if you're thinking Jonathan Abram is going to be that box safety, you might want to pump the brakes just a little bit there. That's where he's best suited is playing in the box. But the Oakland Raiders traditionally play a lot of too high safeties. Um, right now they've got themselves pretty good depth there. Carl Joseph, when he got a chance last year to play, he came in, he filled in, he played well. Eric Harris came in, played well. He was a startable for IDP for fantasy purposes. You were able to get Eric Harris into your lineup a couple times. Uh, Jonathan Abram, he's going to be a stud. He's going to put up numbers. He's probably going to be a top, you know what, I'll say, I think he's going to be a top 12 safety this year. But the guy we can't forget is LaMarcus Joyner. Not only can he play any safety position, but he's nickelback. also never, he's, yep, he's never coming off the field because he'll be that yes. nickelback. So yes. I think you'll see when they start off in their traditional 4-3 base defense, you're going to see LaMarcus Joyner and Jonathan Abram playing safety positions. When they want to bring in that nickel, 
Joyner's going to slide down to that nickel position, and they'll bring in Carl Joseph for that as well. So they'll have the two hard-hitting safeties. The reason they're going to have to do that is their linebacking core is not the <laughs> yeah. fastest out there. So <laughs> yeah, they need to bring in Carl Joseph and Jonathan Abram to give them a little bit of speed and that linebacker mentality behind their linebackers. Oh, that's tasty, boy. That's tasty. The Marcus Joyner, I think he's been one of the most underrated signings of the offseason. Just because the Raiders made all these moves to, you know, get Mac away and get these picks come in. And everything has been about the draft picks and everything. But the most underrated signing for the Raiders, in my opinion, is LaMarcus Joyner. I think he is a bank for IDP leagues this year. But but we'll 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 shy away from that. We'll shy away from that. Uh we'll go right into um let's go into a question. I'm at number Okay, so one week you had the B. Uh, do you would you say it's the same now, Coach, or has it moved a little bit for you? You know what? It's actually kind of moved a little bit up a little bit. It's still not quite a B plus, but if we're looking at a B is eighty percent and a B plus is eighty five, I've kind of moved into that eighty four range. Okay, and it's not because of the players they drafted per, as much as the undrafted free agents and the guys you don't know about. Keelan Doss has been one of the best undrafted free agent signings in the entire league. Right yes, up sir. there with your Preston Williams kind of guys. He, he, in my opinion, he's going to make that 53-man roster. And he's going to okay. make a guy like Keon Hatcher and Marcel Aitman expendable. You're not going to get rid of Dwayne Harris because of what Dwayne Harris can do for you in the special teams. But Keelan Doss will make that team in the 53. And another name, if you want to go for those sexy corners – I use that term very sarcastically because no one wants to. You know, know I like my cornerbacks. You know I like my cornerbacks, Coach. Come on now. Talk to me. Keyshawn Nixon. Ooh. Keyshawn Nixon has been making his name heard in Raiders camp. He has been right up there with um, Garen Conley as the top corners in camp. Really? And this is a team really? that also brought in Daryl Worley last year. Now, with the Oakland Raiders, you've got to remember, the two leading INT guys last year were Gilchrist and Conley, and each of them only had three picks. So there is room to make big plays. If you can make some big plays, you're going to find your way on the Raiders roster. And Keyshawn Nixon has been making plays all camp, and he's a guy to keep an eye on. I think he makes the 53-man roster as well. And he's someone that not a lot of people are talking about right now, but he's a name to be watching. He's a hot name that's moving up that depth chart, in my opinion. I think he's actually performed Isaiah Johnson. Oh, okay. All right, buddy. All right, well, my next question was what was some of the key additions, but I think we've kind of covered that. And, well, you know, the draft, so, uh, and the joiner, me talking about, my, you know, my man crush on joiner, but do you have any of the key additions that maybe you want to touch on a little bit more there, Coach? Well, the key additions, it's funny because the Raiders tore this thing down and they burnt it to the ground, and now they're just kind of rebuilding it here. They brought in guys like Antonio Brown and Terrell Williams. If you know anything from last year, and I'm gonna, I, I planted my flag before. Derek Carr is going to be a lot better than people are giving you credit for right now. I'm, I'm lighting it on fire, Coach. Lighter on fire, baby. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> last year, Derek Carr had nothing to throw to. His top receiver was Jared Cook. He was Cook. crying on the field. Jared the Cook was, was your best option out there. And after Jared Cook, there was nothing. Maybe Jalen Richard was your next best option. That's how bad yeah. things were in Oakland last year. But now this year, they brought in Antonio Brown. They brought in Terrell Williams. They drafted Hunter Renfro. They got, <clears throat> excuse me, they got Darren Waller, who is going to be a super yeah. sleeper type guy who has the ability to be a tight end 12 this year. Derek Carr threw for 4,000 yards last year, throwing to nobody. Nobody, Seth Roberts, a re half-retired Jordy Nelson, Jared <laughs> Cook. Jared Cook was the only one who had a name. Everyone else was over their prime or shouldn't have been on an NFL roster to be begin with. He's, Carr's got no excuses this year not to throw for 30 touchdowns. Yes, 30 touchdowns from Derek Carr and 4,500 yards minimum. Woo! Yeah! Oh. It, should be, 
4,500 yards should be a stretch. He threw for 4,000 with nobody. So you give him some extra players there, like Mr. Big Chest. I broke it out again because that baby is hot. <laughs> and when we're talking key additions, how is this all going to be possible? How is it going to be possible? Because that line is being ranked as one of the worst ones. I think PFF is kind of giving them a grade right now, the 27th offensive line kind of thing. So the Oakland Raiders? Like, yeah, they're, they've been knocking the Oakland Raiders. Ago, they was like in the top five. They were. They are one of the top lines a few years back. And yeah. All, all they've done, they've got, they went out and they picked up Trent Brown. They signed Trent Brown to be their right tackle. I, I think Trent, I know that name. <laughs> Trent Brown came from the Patriots. He is a mountain of a man. You have to go like down to back to LA through Las Vegas. Can you tell me where he went to college at? I don't know, some bum school that hands out uh, diplomas to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> They got Trent Brown, Gabe Jackson's back. Rodney Hudson is an all pro there at center. They brought in Richie Incognito. Now, here's a question. Everyone kind of questioned it because Raiders drafted a bunch of character guys. But I know he's the perfect Raider, in my opinion. <laughs> he is that old school Raider. And everyone knows that sometimes you need that guy to punch you in the mouth when you get in those trenches. I, man, that is. Richie Incognito, even though he's got some character concerns. He brings an attitude to a team. He brings that attitude. He's played on some bad teams and played well. Yes. He's got no quit in him. And then you got Colton Miller going into his second year at left tackle. He will. He should have improved over the offseason. He hasn't looked too bad in the preseason. He better improve. <laughs> he's been too bad, much worse than he was last year at times. Yeah. <laughs> but you got someone like Richie Incognito who's going to punch you right in the nuts if you don't do your job, right? That's what he's there for. So this Raiders offense – has improved a great deal. So those are just some of the names on the offense. And then you look on their defense. They turned back time a little bit with Wontez Burfick, Brandon Marshall, Joyner, Daryl Wooler, Worley, sorry. They came over to help that defense. A, a little bit of a veteran presence. Uh, brought in Corey Leggett. That, I don't know if you watched much of the preseason game with the Arizona Cardinals, but they had three sacks, six quarterback hurries, some knockdowns. This isn't the Raiders team from last year. Raiders last year, if they wanted to get to the quarterback, it wasn't happening. After they traded Khalil Mack, that pass rush disappeared completely. And they Maurice Hurst was their team leader in sacks with four. There's the four sneaky. sacks. Yeah. I'm positive that Aaron Donald had more sacks last year than the entire Oakland Raiders did. Yes. And now, that's, now that's this year. Now you look at that push they're going to get. Corey, Corey Leggett in the middle. Jelly Ellis there. Jonathan Hankins should be better. My guy. My guy. Arden yeah, Key, should. baby. Arden Key, baby. They got Farrell and Arden Key on the outside. And then Arden Marcus, Key, baby. And then one of my man crushers from the draft, Max Crosby, is there. Another one of those guys late. Crosby. Like Crosby. You get him dirt cheap right now on a lot of your fantasy drafts. He doesn't okay, have so let's, hey, Coach, let's go right into the – to my second listener question. <clears throat> so what's that look behind them? Everybody wants to know what the linebacking core looks like, Coach. Uh, that's – we might as well get into it right now. Like uh, the the defensive line, the front four looks like it's got a lot of depth. It looks like it's ready to take the next step. But what is going on in that linebacking core? That's what everybody wants to know, Coach. Yeah, no, that linebacking core is going to be an interesting thing here. Um, I'm just kind of looking at my notes here. And behind Whitehead, Burfick, and Marshall, who are all not the quickest people. Whitehead's got some speed to him. Whitehead's still got some good value. He racked up 126 tackles last year. Their second leading tackler last year, Markel Lee, was 68. He is probably the next guy on the depth chart at this point with 68 tackles. Oh my God. And the, yeah, it gets pretty ugly after that first. The first it's three aren't bad. the greatest. If you're going to ask me how, where do the Raiders need to improve, it's that it's, linebacking court. So why isn't Mason Foster in the silver and black yet, Coach? Why is he not there? That's a good question right now. Uh, I think he's – why isn't he signed anywhere, really? You, there's a lot of teams that can okay. use a linebacker right now. I think he's a little hey, digged that's up. A, but. That's a good retort. That's that's a great retort right there, man. I guess the guy's asking for too much money, right? 
It He's must like, be hey, weird. I'll sit on, I'll sit on the couch. Screw y'all. You know, I guess that's what it is because there's plenty of teams that could use him right now. Yeah, and like you said, they, they got Mark Kelly, Jason Cabinda, and Nick, um, Nicholas Morrow, and then one of our favorites there, Tavon Coney there, Coney. from Notre Dame. He may not even make this team. Yeah, just because he has the name. Yes, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Know, thank you. I love him in Notre Dame. Man, I had Big some people player. coming at me about the Raiders. I said something about Todd Davis. God dang it, man. The Tevon Coney people came at me. <sighs> they were they were coming, Coach. Man, they are real out there. Them yeah. rookies, man, they, they put that hop on people, and it takes over. Yeah, you know what? I like him. I, I do like him, but... He's probably not making this roster when it comes down to it. There's a lot of no, players because here that they got want to three keep. other people on the team that can do the same exact fucking thing. Plus, mm-hmm. they can also help call plays. He can't even help call plays in his rookie year. <laughs> you know? God. I don't, I don't even know if he's ahead of Kale Farmer right now in the, in the, on the depth chart. And you say, Kale okay. Farmer, who's he? Exactly. That's where exactly. Exactly. Two guys, wearing, two guys wearing cowboy hats don't know a guy named Kale Farmer. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just drop this mic. If I could drop this mic right now, that'd be it. <laughs> All okay. right, Coach. Hey, let's get right into the nitty gritty. I got the old uh, snake eyes getting from the wife here, so we're going to have to wrap this up. <laughs> All right. Hey, Coach. Who finishes the season with the most tackles on the Raiders, brother? Well, it's it's hard to argue to hear Whitehead. You okay. know, he's been there. He's done that. He's the best linebacker in that linebacking core. Uh, Vontez Burfix has put up some good numbers in the past. Um, okay. The thing is, I, I think this Raiders D-line is going to be underrated this year. I don't know if you're going to see those plays up the middle. Like we've seen in the past because of guys like Hankins and Alice. Yeah. I think Joyner. teams will try to Joyner. test. Yeah. You got Joiner. You got Abram yeah. coming in the box. Carl Joseph can come down in the box. Yeah. So I think teams I, are going to try to attack the edges, try and take advantage of the rookie there, Clellan Farrell, try and take advantage of a young Arden Key. So I think they're going to attack those outside edges a little bit more. And that's where you're going to see guys like Whitehead probably make a few more tackles than he made last year. Go. Cool. Cool. So go right into who you think is going to get the most picks. Who's getting the most picks this year, Coach? I'm going to go with Lamarcus Joyner here. Yep. Raise his hand. We got. Uh, I, we got I, an I, agreement. I, I, I went. I you. went perfect. I went perfect on tackles. I'm. I'm going to go with Vontez. I'm going to say maybe Gruden be able is able to talk to this guy and maybe is like, hey, come the hell down, man. You don't want your legacy being. Some old dirty route and scoundrel, you know. You don't want to be on the Laugh Olympics on the bad guys team. You don't want to, you, you know what I mean, coach? You know what I mean. Well, he's, you don't he's want to be on the Laugh Olympics bad side. Perfect, perfect's dad is already on under the payroll there in Oakland, too. Uh, Paul Gunther, okay. he's from Paul Gunther came from Cincinnati to Oakland, brought perfect with him. So there we go. There we go. Okay. Someone to understand that Gunther style defense, right? Right, right, right. All right, coach. So picks we we agreed on joint. Okay, sacks. Who's who's leading the Raiders in sacks, brother? Well, this you know me. This is I, the hardest one. This I've been the leading, hype. leading the hype train on Clellan Farrell all season. Now I don't think we're going to hit ten. I know sacks. you have. I know. You know I don't think ten sacks is going to be. It. I don't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to rule it out as ten sacks, but I think. Okay. I think if he can get seven sacks this year, that would be a huge improvement for the team that only had their leader with four last year. So I think Farrell's going to lead them there. Arden Key's going to get a couple here and there, but I'm going to go with Farrell here for the most part. I agreed with you, brother. I agreed with you. I, I agree as Farrell. I, I actually think Arden Key only trails him by about two and a half sacks. I, I have a big gear for Arden Key on. I think this kid... I think he might have got, you know, some uh, some some training, maybe his diet down a little bit better, you know, while he's in the pros, you know, uh, you know, just a little bit better regimen onto him. So 
I like Arden Key this year. Opposite Cleveland Farrell. Uh, John Gruden and Mike Mayock, they didn't think this guy was worthy of a top 10 pick just because he's a bum. I mean, this guy's going to be the real deal. I promise everybody. And Coach is telling you the same thing. All right, so Coach, what's the Oakland Raiders record in 2019-2020? You know what? I'm going to – some people may say this is a hot take. I'm going to go with 8-8. I think 8-8 is very doable. I think I've talked to this in the past – They've got some – the key for them is how they're going to weather that storm off the beginning. There's some tough games off the start of the schedule. Yeah, they got the Denver Broncos. I'm going to chalk that up as a W right now. But after yeah. the Broncos game – I wouldn't they, argue that. They go on – they play some of the top teams in the NFL. They've got one of the toughest schedules in the NFL. I think it's – I actually think it is the toughest schedule based on statistics from last season. And they've got four of their five games that are against these top teams, plus their majority of them are on the road, plus the London game is thrown in there too. So they're on the road. It's going to be a tough – this is where that where that Mayock made those draft picks. Character guys, how are we going to weather the storm? How are we going to handle it? That's why he brought in veterans this year, because he knows it's going to be a tough start to the schedule, and they're going to have to weather that storm. If they can weather that storm, 8-8 eight and eight is my prediction. Awesome, brother. Awesome. I ain't, I ain't going to hate on it one bit. I love just having you on, buddy. And we got something special Friday for Rated Out EP Live, don't we, buddy? We got something cooking, but shh, shh, shh. All There's right, always all something right. cooking over there. If you want to find out what it is, you got to tune in. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We're going back to the live program. We're going back to a – we actually got a TV producer sitting third chair with us Friday night. But here we go. All right. All right, uh, we coach. Had a class to, we had a class to joint up a little bit there between the, us two talking, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, right. ding us down in distance. It's worth the whole show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's an okay segment. It's okay. All right, hey, right. I'm gonna run and go get a beer. What three Raiders you bunking with at camp? I want to know. Do you are you a bottom? Are you a bottom bunk guy? Are you a top bunk guy? And I need to know the Raider that's going to be on that bunk with you. And then I need to know who them two other Raiders are that are sharing that little cubby with you. You know, at camp, where how you got to share that cubby with the other bunk mates. I need to know them two bunks and who's sharing the bunk with you, homie. Okay, so here we go. I, I want my cabin. I want my cabin. I want people to fear my cabin. I want people to leave us alone. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to bunk up. A.B., we're going to go top bunk, me and A.B. You know, we're going to make sure we're staying up. We're going to make sure we uh, stay out of any kind of uh, chambers there that we get frostbite on our feet. So me and A.B., we're going to go bunk up top. But then we're going to get crazy here. I'm going to bring in Richie Incognito and Vontez Burfick. They're going to go bunk in the cubby. Oh, it's, going to be, it's going to be Burfick, Incognito, and AB and me. We're going to hang out there. And no one's messing with our cabin. You know what I'm saying? They're going to come there. They're going to see who's with me. And they're going to go the opposite direction. They're like, this shit's crazy, man. We're out. We're out. So let's compare, hey, let's compare a couple of camps. Because we're five episodes deep here. So what I want to do, I want to go back to Joey the Two San Francisco Niners camp. He's got DeForest Buckner in there. Um, he's got Quan Alexander, and he's got Richard Sherman. And then we go over to Mike Wallard's camp. He's got Baker Mayfield. He's got an Odell Beckham Jr. And he has got Miles Garrett. <laughs> oh, and then we head over to Chicago. Uh, big board IDP himself has got a favorite of his, Allen Robinson, Mitchell Trubisky, and Khalil Mack. So, Coach, how you stacking up with the rest of camp so far, brother? Well, if we're if we're going to play a little four on four, we might be in trouble. But <laughs> if, we're, if we're going to get into a street fight, if we're getting into a street fight, I'm taking perfect and incognito with me everywhere I go. <laughs> We're going to party, man. It, it's going to be gloves are off, no rules. There's going to be steel okay. chairs, baseball so, bats so wrapped in saying, barbed coach, wire. So, so what you're saying, Coach, is maybe at summer camp, 
you might not have the best record at the end of the summer games, but whenever everybody leaves summer camp and y'all get let off at that grocery store or that convenience store and y'all get off, ain't nobody fucking with y'all's block, right? Well, you know what? It's like it's back in my rugby day. Like we didn't play on the bet, we didn't have the best team, and we'd get our butts kicked for the first half. But come the second half, the other team was so banged up they had no starters left. We'd make a comeback and make a game of it. That's what we got here with Raiders. You know, we're getting on our canoes, we're paddling. Richie's gonna look over and see Miles Garrett pulling ahead. He's gonna whack him with the oar, knock his front teeth out, and then we're gonna start moving. That's what we're doing here. AB is going to have his feet off the side of the boat there, dipping his toes in the water. You know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of, I just seen a Twitter video earlier and it was these, uh, it was these two Chinese dudes, right? And they're throwing markers into this bowl, right? And look how my arm's going. Look, and you see it, throw it. This guy's throwing these markers in there and five in a row go into this bowl. Boo, boo, boo. Well, the sixth one, it pans out, right? It pans all the way out. And it shows this third Chinese dude. He's dropping markers in the bowl. <laughs> and the other one's throwing it to the side. That's smart. That's smart, man. That's how you win games. You know what I mean? There you go. There you go, right? Like, there. I, don't, I don't know if we'll get much accomplished, but we'll have one heck of a time. <laughs> Can you imagine the stories? Right, the stories around the campfire with these guys. Oh yeah, I could imagine the stories. We're having them. We've been having them for five episodes, brother. But anyway, hey, coach, I'm gonna give you the floor here for about five, ten, fifteen minutes. You want to put a movie on? Your favorite movie? I don't care. We'll watch it with you, coach. Whatever <laughs> you want to do, brother. <laughs> the floor's yours, homie. Go ahead. Put them sunglasses on because you know we're now the only video series that offers sunglass wearing. So I'd appreciate it if you now everybody and all the listeners would put your sunglasses on. Coach, please tell everybody where to find you, sir. Hey, you can come check us out. First off, come check us out on Twitter. You know, come, I'm Dingus4. Um, I'm Canadian. I don't have very many trolls yet. So come hit me up. Come troll me. I, I want to know what it feels like to have a troll. No, Dougie's you don't. Got trolls. Everyone's got trolls. Dingus don't have no trolls. So come hit me up over there. Uh, <laughs> <it has> to... <laughs> God, they're going to come at you so hard. I got the Rich Incognito thing going here. I'm poking the bears. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I also just, like this said, Dynasty Vipers there, at Dynasty Vipers, DynastyVipers.com. Check us out there. Uh, if you hit that link, you go check them out. You can see the Viper cast. We got a few episodes there. Come check that out. Leave some comments, people. We know our show is not perfect, so we want to know how to make it better for each and every one of you, for the listeners, to what's going to help you become a better fantasy owner. And here's the trick. When you make those comments, you're helping us become better as well. We don't know everything. I don't care who you are. You can say you know everything, but you don't know everything. So you send us those comments. We take a look at ourselves. We're able to put a better product out for you. We're able to educate you, educate ourselves. Uh, my buddy B. Marcy, he's helped me out a lot there. Give him a follow. He's criminally underrated. I, I think he's got about 100. I think he's got under 200 followers on Twitter right now, and I think 95% of them are his family members. So go we check him out. Give him a follow. That. We're gonna take care of that. B yeah, Marcy, got, what is get, it? Hey, Coach, what is it? At B Marcy. B, capital M A R T Z Y. At B Marcy. Okay, everybody. And for the Canadians out there, it's M A R T Z Y. Okay, so we got that. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh shit, butterfly effect. I don't know what the hell's going on now. <laughs> and if you enjoy my little one liners here and there where I just jump in and start throwing some stuff out there, check out Rated IDP Live because we give we drop all kinds of knowledge there. We get bring in the, some of the best guests in the industry. They come on to our show, we have a blast. They let their hair down. They be who they are. You know what I mean? No one's pretending to be anyone. What you see is what you get. This is your best chance to see your favorite analysts live with their hair down, their hat off, and ready to rock and roll. It's a great time, and everyone has a blast doing it every week. Uh, I think I missed last week, but the week before, we had Miss Kaysom there who just dropped some mad beats down on us. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get there. So come check that out. Those are some places to find me here. And, yeah. Let me have it. Let me hear it. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, we actually took a little two week two week break from Rated IDP Live uh, since Miss Casey, Miss the the Miss Missy Meaner Elliot came on the show. We took a little break and uh, we've revamped it. Uh, we've revamped the show. Uh, we're coming to you live Friday nights at eight thirty p.m. Central. On reader, writer, Nathan Cheat always gets mad at me the way I say this name. But uh, reader, I, reader Digest Network is coming to you live with Rated IDP Live, me and Coach at 8.30 p.m. Central every Friday night. So we're going to get that going on this week. We got Johnny the Greek on, just booked. And I got another special, little special guest lined up. Uh, so look out for that. Look out for DynastyVipers.com. Our very, very good friend, at Dingus4 on Twitter, at Coach Donnelly, co-host, rated IDP Live. Of course, check out the Dynasty Vipercast. Please check out the Donnie Viper cast. And, of course, of course, last thing, everybody, go follow at B-M-A-R-T-Z-Y, at b Marty. That's our brother from another mother. He's supported me and Coach. He's co-owner in Dynasty Vipers. Please go follow Marty. He's one hell of a dude. He'll be on Rated IDP Live as soon as I can get him on. So, Coach. One more quick thing here. One more, words, one more quick Horace, thing here. Brother, Go ahead. When you come on to a Rated IDP Live, I'm gonna, I am I got a drinking game for everyone. You ready? We're come on. going live. Come on. Every time I go um when I'm trying to buy time, that's a shot, okay? Oh, Every time oh, I touch my nose grab my nose, something like that, it's another oh, shot. I guarantee you, you're going to be buzzed by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the perfect send-off right there. So, for your host at Oklahoma Doug, IDP Summer Camp, Episode 5, the Oakland Raiders, and my wonderful co-host, for Rated IDP Live and guest for this episode number five at Dingus 4, Coach Donnelly. This is IDP Summer Camp, powered by IDPGuys.org. We're out. Horns down. Peace. <laughs> Roll time.